Miami Beach has changed a lot, especially South Miami Beach. Now there's a nightclub in every corner and there's a girl in a bikini everywhere. So it takes a special kind of fighter to really be focused and train here today. Then I keep dame, dame to my skin and loca. In the kitchen, whipping that dope up, you can smell a odor. Pug on pitching, we gon' hit it like we Sammy Sosa. Put that Billy to the limit, you can smell a odor. Heard that drone is still away, cut it out, cut it out. Spicy mommies on the way. When you fight abroad in a different time zone, it's important to get used to the time zone. It's important to kind of settle in. This morning, he's doing a run. He's gone for a steady 40 minutes. Part of it is actually to get rid of the cobwebs from the travel. The main thing is that he's getting the right recovery, because what you don't want to do with any athlete is keep going, going, going. I like fresh air. I like greenery. I like the sea. Even sometimes when I'm by the sea on a holiday, I can go by the sea and pray. It's airy, it's peaceful, but I've got so much to focus on. My main focus is just solely on June 1st. <laughs> Minutes before he walks in that ring, and this switch goes. You see something in his eyes just change. There is like a ruthless guy. He's the biggest boxing attraction in all of Europe. Gold medal in the 2012 Summer Olympics. He was viewed as the next Lennox Lewis. A punch that will reverberate around the world. He's the total package. He is winning 17 fights in. He, he wins a heavyweight championship. He's the best finisher in the game. He gets one opportunity, one punch lands, another five will come and that'll be it. In the UK, he cannot walk down the street now without being mobbed by fans and well-wishers. And now we're getting to the point where he's broadening, he's coming to America. In order to be recognized as a world champion, you have to be recognized in America. This is like an empty warehouse, but they brought character and life to the place. They build the exact same boxing ring. They've got a smaller boxing ring to the right of me where like, there's nowhere to hide in a small boxing ring. So we do a lot of pad work and drills in there so I become comfortable when I step into a big space and some um, air con because it gets warm in Miami. Good, relax, calm, calm. I'll come in for one more, just even more calm. There you go, good. Beautiful, that's beautiful boxing. Good, that's lovely, Josh. He comes rushing in. There you go. I was with Anthony Joshua in his camp in England just a couple of weeks ago, and you could already see that he's working on practices in the ring with his coach, uh, Rob McCracken, to combat and meet a guy who's coming in with fast hands. Boxing Andy Ruiz coming in as the new opponent. Um, obviously, he's, he's quicker than the, the opponent that Anthony had in place. Jarrell Miller, the top 10 heavyweight with a big punch. Miller's got the gift of gab. Your mom like a big belly chubby see. dude, so stop it, Fab. I'm your stop landlord. it. You're not going to talk to me. You're I'm not going to punch You're not going to beat me. And oh, did he talk shit. Your mama's so ugly, she looking in the mirror, the mirror broke. What you want to talk about, boy? How old are you? Oh. He had pretty good stamina for a man that size, good hand speed for a man that size, and very good work rate. And maybe now we know why he had such a good work rate for that size. So when the news dropped that Jarrell Miller had tested positive for not one, not two, but three different chemical performance enhancers. I messed up. I made a bad call. People were, I would say, very, very bummed. A lot of ways to handle the situation. I handle it wrongly, and I'm paying a price for it. 
Ruiz was a better matchup for Joshua than Miller because Miller had the mentality where he doesn't want to lose, but he's not going to go all out the way Andy Ruiz will. Anthony has to adjust a little bit, use his reach a little bit more and be a little bit busier. So um, that's the strategy we'll be working on over the next couple of weeks. Today, like my first boxing session, I could just feel all the like lag on the body. It's important to like focus on training and not get lost in anything else because when it comes down to it, if you ain't performing in there, you get found out. You know, the percentage and the margins are too, are too small to kind of make any mistakes. Naturally, you think, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of all these people because in boxing, especially heavyweight boxing, there's one thing getting beat, but there's one thing getting beat bad. Higher. Chin down, left hook high. That's the shot. I think Anthony Joshua is still an enigma in many ways. He's an Adonis, yet there are still question marks about him at the very elite level in heavyweight boxing right now undefeated, but still on the job, if you like. He's had one defining fight against Vladimir Klitschko. The real proving ground for Anthony Joshua was the fight against Vladimir Klitschko. And this was his greatest moment. The atmosphere was like none I've ever seen. I mean, it was probably as big a heavyweight fight as you've seen since Holyfield versus Mike Tyson. The time has arrived. For Joshua to look like he's gonna knock out Klitschko, then Klitschko comes back in the next round and knocks down Joshua. It was almost like a guy who was maybe a little bit too young versus a guy who was a little bit too old, but they both knew that they had that sort of special something in them. Joshua looks like he's completely spent, somehow finds the reserve in his gas tank and then comes back in the 11th round, knocks down Vladimir Klitschko twice in front of the biggest crowd in British boxing history. I and mean, that was the crowning achievement of Anthony Joshua's career without question. Meek Mill, Philadelphia. I'm gonna sit down and speak to him about the stuff he's been through. Meek Millie. Yo, AJ, what's up? You say hey, welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Alrighty, welcome to Miami. I've got a lot of respect for him. He's done positive things. He's had his own issues. So it'll be interesting to see his take on life because it's a lot different to what the norm is or what we perceive as the norm. I always wanted to know, like, as a boxer, how is it when you step into the ring, your name and career and everything you work for is on the line? I never box to kind of be a champion. When I go into the ring, it's not just about I want to be the biggest and baddest. It's about what's it done for me as a person? Because I know as sports, I have a shelf life. I've got another five to 10 years. And when it's done, I'm going to fade off into the background. Yeah. And I don't want to be bitter watching the next generation. I want to be making the right decisions now. My legacy lives on. I've done my thing. Let me respect the next generation coming up. Rappers only really make it here in the rap game successfully probably five years. I'm on my eighth year. So you know, to uh, even be in this position, I try to make the best out of everything. I got a seven-year-old son. I got a son, he's three years older. But I feel like uh, the responsibility of making sure you understand what the next generation is here for. That was my motivation because I came from poverty. And where I come from, I know they don't get a chance to see it. All they see is violence, death, jail, yes. prison. So you know, I try to inspire and show people that there's more to the world than your neighborhood. It's up to people like me and you to kind of go back to the communities and do good. Yeah. Because we've been blessed with this opportunity. Yeah, we will. For sure. But I give my life to the sport. Other than that, I'm just going through the motion and just having fun with it because I know it don't last forever. I am that I am. What uh, more yeah, can I I'm be? I'm like that too. Like when I'm performing, it could be 100,000 people. I just be like, that's what I'm saying. Until I get to the stage, that's when the adrenaline kick in. You know, that's and then I'm as afraid. soon as that bell goes and yeah. the ref steps out, and let's get to business now. So June 1st, you already know what time it is. Dream Chasers, we're going to be in the building for support. Keep doing what you're doing, respect, being, remaining the champion. I appreciate you. Come on, bro. No Hopefully problem. one day we can train together so I can get this fat stomach out of here. That shows you're living good. Yeah. Don't ever get rid but of no, that. No, I need a body. <laughs> you know you said it's levels. I got the money. I got my hair right. <laughs> Time to get the body right. All right, man. Good to see you. Come out of anything. Let me know. Everyone's a hero in their own right. I don't think I'll be a hero to the world. I think I'll be a hero to my community, my family. And I think that is what matters mostly. Yeah, I'm coming for you. I'm for real. No pound for pound. I was forged in steel. I was in.